Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Skyrim. Special edition, of course. <laughs> we are here in Riften, as we left off, but you might as well take a look that we don't have Ari with us. I just thought she was too creepy for my taste. I just... I didn't... Well, I liked her character and all, but character design and everything, but I don't want to have to deal with <laughs> something like cannibalism or something. And I like to pick flowers, so, um, she's out of our list. Maybe we'll get another follower that doesn't require us to have a follower slot. Anyway, I got something called Frostfall and I am going to enable it except and we have a treasure map it seems to be Riverwood And it's just over there in a log. So we'll have to go there. But first we're going to get Convair. And he's Bishop's Wolf. With dog. I'm not really sure because he barks. And wolves don't bark. Maybe he's, maybe he's a hybrid? Should we take on the fort? Ah. I am a Nord. I want a sleeve thingy. Like an armor with sleeves. Hey Julian, nice work. I saw my life flash before my eyes. <laughs> short. Get shot and you go. <laughs> Are you guys okay? Now my friend here will take your goods. <laughs> oh, I will. Um, Bishop's arrow. Oh my god, I did it! <laughs> Why was it locked? And I think we finished this. Does it say cleared? No. I mean, I. Oh, it doesn't matter. So I can stab you in the back. <laughs> that was that was awesome. <laughs> oh my god, that's a sleeveless one. Hear your footsteps. Hey. Keep close to me. Oh my god, that was awesome. I love the animations. Ah, there you are, you mutt. The hell were you thinking getting trapped and making me track you all the way to this godforsaken place? Yeah. There, there. We say we play a little game for old time's sake. I'll shoot an arrow into one of these bandit bastards' knees. You can go rip his face off. Let's make these sons of bitches pay. Oh, Thank you. Good. Well, now we have Conver. Now that Conver is safe, will you join me? I'm impressed. I didn't think a woman like you had it in ya. <laughs> Kate's fighting. This is ter this is a terrible thing to do to animals. 
I hope this look of disdain conveys exactly what I'm feeling for you right now. And what is that exactly? Yeah, I'm going to get you get you in all sorts of trouble. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Not that kind. Billion. Yes, Indigo? Tell me something fascinating to pass the time. Ooh, let's see. The clockwork apostles of Sofa Sil like to replace body parts with machinery. I'm not sure I fancy it myself, but it's remarkable that it's possible. Yes, yes, I think I heard that somewhere. Fascinating stuff. Thank you. My mind is grateful. It's my pleasure, Inigo. <laughs> my friend, Skyrim is a big and often confusing place. We it are is. bound to lose each other from time to time. Never fear. That map you have is special. This old thing? Yes. There is more to it than you may realize. My brother once found one just like it on the remains of some poor old adventurer in Citadel. It does not only mark locations, it can also show the position of items and people too. Really? Watch this. Where are you, Inigo? There! See? I have wow. placed myself on your map. If we <laughs> find ourselves separated, all you need to do is look me up. Pretty fantastic, eh? <laughs> That's great, Inigo. Thank you. No problem. I am always happy to help. Any thoughts? No. Alright then. Sorry, I keep meaning to give you this. Since this arrangement seems to be working out all right for us so far. <coughs> what is it? Oh, it's a Dwemer resonance sphere. Just something my father gave to me before I left home for when I found myself someone to travel with. When activated, it resonates with its twin, which I'll always keep on my person. That way, if we're ever separated, all you have to do is give us a rub and we'll be able to find each other, no matter how far apart we are. Handy, right? Very. Thank you, Lucian. Don't mention it. I mean, hopefully we won't have to use it very often. I'll stick to you like a... Like a... Oh, I don't know. Something sticky. Yep. <laughs> That's what I'll do. <laughs> Alright then. Let's get ourselves to Helgen right now. Investigate Helgen. That was Alduin. That's Alduin. This is the live another life. Like it's a gate. Is a quest for that. So how this works is we skip the Helgen Keep thingy. We skip the Helgen Keep and we'll just have to save either uh, Hadwa or what was his name? Rango? Yeah, Rango. But I'm going to save Hadwa. We have to get out of here. Looks like he's gone for good this time. But I don't think we should stick around to see if he comes back. The closest town from here is Riverwood. My uncle's the blacksmith there. I'm sure he'd help you out. It's probably best if we split up. Good luck. I wouldn't have made it without your help today. Ain't every day we get Hadvar. How do you know him? <laughs> He's a friend. He promised you could help. I'd be glad to help a friend of Hadfar. But you didn't answer my question. How do you know? A dragon attacked Helgen and destroyed it. Hadvar and I escaped what? it together. A dragon? In Helgen? That explains what I saw earlier. Flying down the valley from the south. I was hoping I was wrong about what I thought it was. It was a dragon. Hadwar will tell you the same thing. A dragon? Here in Skyrim? 
What's this world coming to? First the war, now dragons. Trouble loves company, they say. The Jarl needs to know if there's a dragon on the loose. Riverwood is defenseless. We need to get word to Jarl Balbruf in Whiterun to send whatever soldiers he can. If you'll do that for me, I'll be in your debt. Well, one of us has to do something. I said no. No adventures, no theatrics, no thief chasing. Well, what are you going to do then, huh? Let's hear it. We are done talking about this. Well, I don't know what you overheard, but the Riverwood Trader is still open. Oh, Feel Riverwood. free to shop. Great hunting and Great. Ale. What do you have for sale? Which Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. I better get back to cleaning the store. What a the Riverwood Trader. Do you I have think any spells? I have a few old spell books laying about. If you want more, you'll have to <coughs> go to the Winterhold. My sister. What oh, happened yeah, here? We, we did have a bit of a, a break in. We, we still have plenty to sell. Robbers were only after one thing. And what was An that? An ornament, solid gold in the shape of a dragon's claw. I can get it for you if you want. You could. <laughs> got some coin coming in from my last shipment. It's yours if you bring my claw back. All right. Um, if you're going to get those thieves, you should head to Bleak Falls Barrow, northwest of town. All right. So, Jillian, is there anyone special waiting for you back home? Of course. I mean, I hope they're not actually waiting for me per se, but I'm sure my parents will be glad to have me back when this is all over. I was not talking about your parents. No? Then what did you mean? I meant, do you have a partner? Oh, I see. Well, yes, we're all partners here, aren't we? Partners in crime. And now you are being deliberately obtuse. And you are being nosy. Hey, <laughs> fair enough. Maybe they are really ugly. <laughs> We really should warn the Yarl of Whiterun about what happened to Helga. People are in danger. Yeah, we should. Um, let's go oh, to yeah. the inn and sleep there for the night. All right. I was wondering, can you whistle? Yeah, why? Well, it could be a good way for us to quickly communicate. Look, I found this book. It made interesting reading. Maybe you should give it a look over. All right. Anyway, what did you want to talk about? You look like you have something else on your mind. They say that dragons have returned to Skyrim. The Helgen attack does not bode well. I wonder if the Jarl of Whiterun knows he has a giant lizard problem. If not, he may reward us for the information. <laughs> yep. There's that quintessentially inny smell. They should bottle the stuff. <laughs> Throw it in the sea. You're right. We should go and see how m much he knows. Yes, information is usually worth something to someone. And in this case, it could help save lives. Prospect and Peril have always been bedfellows, but these are strange times we live in, my friend. Very. Now, what did you want to discuss? Mind if I ask you something? Go ahead, ask away. Do you want to relax here for a bit? Okay, come and get me when it is time to go. All right. What is on your mind? Lucian, wait here. I'll be right here. All right. So, Bishop, how did you become a ranger? A sudden interest. I want to get to know you better. Ah, princess. You don't need to hear my life story to do princess? that. Princess? Ah, fine. How did I become a ranger? Like by anyone else sells themselves. I was raised with the skills. The difference is that I was taught them to survive, not for profit. Not an honest kind of profit, anyway. I started ranging about seven years or so before we met. Word got around I could track runaways or hunt meals for fat, lazy nobles. Whatever. 
I didn't plan on it, but they had gold and I had a bow, so I became their ranger. I'm What sad. about the illustrious woman before me? <laughs> so nosy about my life. My skills were for hire, and I, it brought me here to Skyrim. Mercenary work, huh? I know the routine. It's probably the only straight-up job I could get with a wolf at my heels. <laughs> scared anyone else off. You know what? Our pasts are our pasts. We're not going to make the future any better by going on about them. True. As for the present, isn't there somewhere we had to be going? Some long-lost hat to be retrieving? No? If all else fails, there's always the end. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Sure. What brought you to Skyrim? So many things. Culture, the architecture, but most of all, the enormous Dwemer presence here. The technology the dwarves possessed all those years ago is miles beyond us, even today. The chance to study it in person. I just couldn't resist. <laughs> Where are you from, Lucian? Cyrodiil. Though I suppose you could probably guess that. I grew up in the Imperial City, mostly with my nose in a book. <laughs> my family own a small amount of property there, and they always encourage me to pursue my interests. Namely, knowledge. In all its forms. That's nice. I spent some time at the Arcane University, a couple of years at the archives of White Gold Tower, and I've studied at every academy in the city. But no amount of academic knowledge can compare to some practical experience. I'm done reading about the world. Now I want to see it. <laughs> nice to have parents that support you. I wasn't so lucky. They... <laughs> they didn't approve of me going out and see the world. Tell me about your family. Oh, the Flavius is firmly rooted in the Imperial City. We've always had a strong sense of home. <laughs> We're a tight-knit bunch, and we get on rather well most of the time. They worry, though. Particularly about me. <laughs> Gave them quite a shock when I told them about this expedition. I can believe that. For me? My parents, they, um... They disowned me. So that's why I went into mercenary work wasn't <laughs> I couldn't do anything else well tell me about your father Davidicus is his name he's an academic like me always up to his elbows in old scrolls he does a lot of consultancy work for the imperial government hunts down relics for them that sort of thing hmm. I'd be lying if I said we always saw eye to eye but I owe a lot to him and he's very dear to me <laughs> tell me about your mother Ah, uh, Captain Lyra of the Imperial Legion. She and wow. I couldn't be more different, but she's always <laughs> supported me in everything I've done. She fought against the Thalmor in the Great War. In fact, she was there for Lord Narofin's defeat at the Battle of the Red Ring. How? Oh. She retired to marry my father and raise me. But despite her career, she never tried to force me onto the same path. By the time I was old enough to hold a book, it was clear I was going to follow my father into the academic world. And she was delighted for me. I write to her fairly regularly. My father, too. And while she worries, I think she's proud of me for doing this. <laughs> I hope so, anyway. Do you have any siblings? None. I was the proverbial apple of my parents' proverbial eyes. <laughs> and yes, they spoiled me rotten. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder what it would have been like to have had a brother or a sister. But then I wouldn't be quite who I am today. So I can't complain. True. I was the only child, too. I actually lived in solitude for up until I was 15, but <sighs> yeah, that's all I wanted to know. All right, then. R Everything okay? The loot in your cell was full of arrows. I take it you prefer singing? Yes. I have never been very good though. I enjoy writing songs, but sometimes it is more fun just making up words as I go along. <laughs> Improvisation keeps the mind sharp and boredom at bay. 
If I asked you, would you sometimes sing for me while we travel? Maybe, but nothing too serious. <laughs> I would rather save my proper songs for the Bard's College. For now, anyway. Why? Well, I know it is silly, but my songs are special to me. I would rather perform them in a special place. However, if you just want me to improvise something while we are traveling, maybe I can help you out. We will see. Alright then. Um... Mind if I ask you something? Of course. What do you want to know? Tell me about your past. My brother and I never knew our real parents. We were found abandoned in a smelly shack by a soldier on his way to battle. Oh. We melted his heart with our fuzzy little faces, and he carried us to the nearest town. He deposited us at an orphanage, and that is where we spent most of our childhood. Tell me more about your past. My brother and I were adopted by a couple of retired assassins. I guess the orphanage did not do a family background check. <laughs> they should have. <laughs> you must have had an interesting childhood. Mine was perhaps a little more unconventional than most, but I suppose all childhoods are interesting to some degree. My parents provided me with a love and encouragement. Apart from the nightly training sessions, we were a normal family. Tell me more about your past. I was bullied by the other Khajiit children because of my unusual color and markings. <laughs> My mother showed me a handy trick with a rock and a glove. I was <laughs> never bothered again. <laughs> that's a big... That's, that's a bit extreme. You could have killed someone. Childhood is extreme. It is a time of hard learning, but also teaching. Anyway, I never seriously hurt anyone until I was a lot older. <laughs> that's good. Tell me about... Uh, Tell me about yourself. My father showed my brother and I how to use a sword. My <laughs> mother taught us the bow. Happy childhood memories. <laughs> I grew up in Riverhold, not far from Cyrodiil. My brother and I headed for the Imperial City to find our fortune when we came of age. I found love, for a time at least. My brother found death. Death? I will come to that soon. There is a little more to hear first. My mother and father are both gone. They died protecting a trading caravan a few years back. I guess I am an orphan again. <sighs> Sorry for your loss. That means a great deal. Thank you. What were your parents like? I suppose they were a bit of an odd couple, being an Argonian and a Khajiit, but they <laughs> adored each other. And us. Despite their previous profession, they were good people. I can understand that. I don't remember much after, after what happened between us, but... The last thing I remember after taking that job is... That my parents went out looking for me. And they found and they found death instead of me. Tell me more about your past. My brother and I found much work as cell swords. We never made it to the Imperial City, but we made a lot of coin. <laughs> What kind of that drops did you do? A bit of giant killing here, a bit of witch slaying there. <laughs> we took gold when it was offered, but sometimes we worked for nothing. Yeah. It is hard to deny those in need whether they have coin or not. Uh -huh. We made more than enough from those who could pay anyway. <laughs> did you travel? Where did your travels take you? All over Cyrodiil, from the Gold Coast to the Gerald Mountains. It is a wonderful land, but quite tame compared to Skyrim. Those were happy times, traveling or working during the day, camping out under the stars at night. 
Life was good. <laughs> I awoke one morning to a lot of noise outside our tent. My brother staggered in, bleeding, and pushed our father's sword into my hand. He said that if I loved him, I would run. He used the last of his strength to rip out the back of the tent and push me down the slope beyond. Some Khajiit hating locals had blamed us for a spate of robberies in the area and had decided to take the matter into their own hands. Twelve of them had snuck up on us in the night. My brother died, but I live because of him. I'm so sorry for your loss. Losing your brother like that must have been terrible. Yes, that morning I lost all that was dear to me. Unfortunately, I also uncovered a side of myself I never knew existed. Do you ever wish you had stayed and fought? Every day, my friend. Every day. <laughs> what was your brother's name? His name was Fergus. I miss him very much, but part of me is glad he did not witness what became of me after his passing. If you have died, if you would have died instead of him, he may have traveled a similar path. I appreciate the sentiment, but I hit rock bottom and kept digging. He would have been stronger. Tell me more about your past. I was recruited by a group of bandits a few years ago. That is when I discovered Skuma. It was the beginning of a lot of nastiness. I was with a bandit girl for a while. Turns <laughs> out she was using me. She wanted protection, not affection. As soon as she found someone more psychopathic, I was dropped like a sack of troll dung. Did you love her? I thought I did. We dulled each other's pain somewhat. She seemed like the only bright thing in a very dark place. Regrettably, she was a vicious, manipulative harpy. <laughs> I left the bandits and took the only ally I had with me. He was also an addict, but we thought we had it under control. His name was Felix. He was a big fellow, good in his scrap. We became mercenaries together. After a few months, Felix and I had made a little gold, but our addiction to Skuma was getting in the way. No one trusts an addict, my friend. Especially not another addict. Do you ever miss Skuma? From time to time, my body does. But my mind is made up. I am never touching this stuff again. It helped me smother some painful memories. But it took my sense and reason as payment. It was not a fair trade. True that. Tell me about Felix. There is not much to tell. He never spoke about his past, but it was clear he had also been through a great deal before becoming a bandit. That life did not seem to suit him. He had been an educated man at some point, I am sure of it. He was violent, but he had retained some dim vestige of honor. I wish we had met under different circumstances. Hmm. After what happened between us, when I awoke, I didn't remember much, but... I found out about my parents and fell into a really dark place. That's why I went into banditry and became an outlaw. It's not pretty. Tell me more about your past. One day, Felix burst into my chamber. Instinct took over and I reacted. His murder was my second last step on the road of dishonor. <laughs> Trying to kill you was my last. My journal tells the rest. Read it if you want. I do not enjoy speaking of these things. That is my story. Not a happy one, but maybe the happy stuff is still to come.